Hi, my name's Daniel. Welcome to the Almagir.net vlog. Today I'm going to be talking about transfers and Birmingham City. How Blues find them, who makes the decisions and why. With a new transfer window just about open now, I thought now would be a good time to talk about how it works for Birmingham City. With a new head coach in place, I talk Ranker, a new backroom staff to be named and a wad of cash in the bank thanks to the transfer of Jude Bellingham, Birmingham City are in a really good place right now to bring in players. But how does it all work? First off, let's talk about how Blues find players. If you take some transfer rumours for granted, then all you need is a copy of Football Manager and a list of players that used to play for Ito Karanka and you've pretty much got the transfers that Birmingham City are working on. Of course, it's not like that at all and we only ever hear about a small minority of players that Blues are actually looking at at any time. There's a couple of avenues for uh, information to come into Blues on how to find players. The most obvious avenue is the scouting department. Now, the scouts work year-round looking at players and then feeding that information back to West Hills. Scouts aren't just looking at players to um, see if they fit a position, they'll be looking at physical and technical attributes to see if they're the right kind of player for Blues at that time. Uh, physical attributes they could be looking at is stamina, endurance, or how explosive a uh, player's pace is, whilst technically they might be looking at their vision, their passing, their tackling, and all that sort of thing. Scouts will also judge a player based on um, if they're, to use a term popularised by Boris, uh, oven ready, or if they've just got raw potential and could grow into a player for the club. Blues also receive lots of messages and emails from agents and other clubs touting their players to Blues. Um, a good couple of examples of this recently are Kiefer Moore, who's just signed for Cardiff City, and Lovren Meyer. Now, Kiefer Moore was offered around to championship clubs because Wigan need the money. Uh, being in an administration, they've got debts to pay. Whilst Lovren Meyer, Dini Mosegreb took a flyer, I think, thinking that Blues might be interested, having already signed Ivan Shunyic and looked at him before, and they want to move him on, so they got in contact with Blues to see if they wanted double bubble. This sort of thing is why hypothetical deals like Lover and Meyer come out into the open. Right now, Blues are trying to seal any rumours from leaving the club at all, which is why transfer gossip is a bit thin on the ground. However, other clubs and players, well, they might have reasons for leaking information, um, maybe to get the player the move he wants or to start a bidding war, an auction, that sort of thing. But there is always a ways that information comes out. So once Blues have received all the scouting information, what do they do with it? Now, data is good, but it's no good without context. All scouting information, messages, and all that sort of thing need to come into a central point uh, to be collated and sorted through to build a list of what is realistically available. It's then the job of people like uh, Blue CEO, Ren Juan Dong, and Christian Speakman to make the really tough decision, which is financials. Now, Blues will have some idea of wages and transfer fees applicable for a player before they sign them. It's the job of people like uh, Ren and Speakman to make those kind of decisions. Who is realistically affordable and who represents good value for money? There'll be some sort of set wages and transfer budget and I will be quite frankly amazed if those figures have not been discussed with Ital Karanka and agreed with him before he took the Blues job. Now that's not to say that Blues have got this massive transfer war chest. It's not about how much money you spend. It's about how smart that you spend it. This summer is actually a really good case in point. It's a massive buyer's market. Clubs are broke because of the coronavirus pandemic. There's been less um, commercial revenue, ticketing revenue coming in. And so a lot of clubs will be looking to slash wage budgets and to bring in money. That makes it a very attractive proposition for Blues to do business in. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a repeat of last summer where Blues looked at players who were young, inexpensive, but had potential to grow and made bids for those because quite frankly it worked so we've got a list of players available on a budget now what i think this is where we're going to see a big difference last year as it's been made clear that Ito karanka has the final say in all transfers i think that's really important myself because if karanka has the responsibility for setting up a team for getting the team to win for league position then it's vital that he has the tools he feels he needs to do that and that means he must have a say in transfers last year it was different um 
Pep Quartet didn't have a say in all transfers coming into the club. Uh, an example of this would have been Josh McEachern. Uh, Josh McEachern came in on trial. Um, Pep looked at him and said he didn't want him and was overruled and we signed McEachern anyway. Now, that wasn't the case all the time. Uh, for example, in the winter window, uh, Pep was given a list of strikers that were available and he picked Scott Hogan with the attendant great results that we got from that transfer. However, there was clearly a split between the board and Pep. And that split made for a toxic environment and was probably was a reason why we didn't do so well last year. Now, this is where I'm much more optimistic and hopeful that things are going to be much better this year. Um, I talk Oranka comes with a pedigree uh, and enough prestige that I think the board are going to trust him more to pick the players he wants and the style he wants uh, to take it forwards. Transfers are a key part of any relationship between a board and a manager and it's really really important that the club get this right this year if we are to grow and consolidate and push for promotion. Now I know some people are against the idea of a head coach and a director of football because you know it's not the old school way of doing things but personally I think the right people in the right places it can work but it's all about chemistry if the head coach and the director of football trust each other implicitly then there won't be any arguments and everyone will work together smoothly and this is what we've got to hope for this year if you've enjoyed this video please click like uh, it all helps and if you want to see more content on birmingham the owners or any of that shiz then please click subscribe and if you tick the little bell then you'll be notified when i post something new online thank you for watching appreciate it as always until next time keep right on